For me, playing a video game on mobile is perfect for when my attention is elsewhere, usually on my computer. While missing a lot of the features of the PC Classic of the same name, Majesty Mobile is a great fit for this playstyle and manages to provide an enjoyable experience that kept me playing for well over 30 hours. Majesty the Fantasy Kingdom is a passive real-time strategy city management game released for mobile and is somewhat of a port of the classic PC game of the same name. The game is single player only and was released way back in 2011 by Herocraft. That's almost 11 years ago at the time of writing. A very different time in terms of technology compared to today, so don't go into this expecting the highest quality visuals. In Majesty, you play as the ruler of your kingdom, placing down buildings and recruiting heroes to defend your land or complete objectives. When I say that Majesty is a passive strategy game, by this I mean you have no direct control over any of your units. Instead, you set out rewards for them, like exploring to a specific point on the map, or you can put out a hit on whatever you want destroyed and your units will try their damnedest to destroy it, if the cost is worth it. Most of what you'll be doing is organizing the layout of your city and making sure that your taxes are flowing in nicely, so that you end up with more money than Scrooge McDuck. I grew up on the PC release of Majesty, and its Northern Realms expansion. Me and my father loved playing the game and discussing how we went about each mission. I remember back when I built my first PC, Majesty was one of the first games I installed on it. So, please keep this in mind while listening to my opinions here, as that will obviously affect them. Let's kick things off by talking about the biggest gripe for mobile gaming, the monetization. There are three versions of Majesty. The base game, Majesty the Fantasy Kingdom, the upgraded Northern Expansion, and the horrendous free version. The two paid versions of the game are four quid, five dollars, or your regional equivalent, and they work perfectly fine offline. The base game has the least features of the three and costs the same as the Northern Expansion. I really only recommend you get this version of the game if you want to experience some extra campaign missions. Otherwise, just go straight for the Northern Expansion. The Northern Expansion version has some really nice quality of life features over the base game, such as having multiple save slots, a new set of campaign missions, and weather effects, which is a lovely little touch because I don't even think the Majesty 2 on PC had that. The expansion also adds in the premium currency gems, which are used to purchase cheats for your current game session. You receive gems by completing missions with a high score, but you can always buy them too. I wouldn't have an issue with this, but having your cheats linked to your current game session is very frustrating. Reloading the save or restarting the level just causes you to lose your cheats and the money you spent on those gems. I ended up saving my gems throughout my campaign, and I only spent them on the final level, which led to me being very disappointed by the results. I purchased the most expensive cheat, which upgrades your necromancers so that they spawn vampires instead of skeletons, vampires being the most powerful undead unit. And I really didn't notice much, since the vampires just wandered off and did their own thing. At one point I was watching my necromancers who had no units with them, only to find a vampire on his own fighting a monster lair. It's useful in the long run, sure, but not when you're trying to get an objective completed. The free version of Majesty seems to have the most recent updates since it was released in 2014. But this version is riddled with the usual prompts for microtransactions and ads. To set your expectations for this version, the app package is literally titled the premium version of the game, so Herocraft knows you will have to spend money to enjoy this version. It seems to be the northern expansion with a few extra features and heavier monetization. You get 10 gems for starting the game and have to spend one gem to play a level. This includes restarting the level, and unbelievably you have to spend a gem to even save the game. The game starts off by pestering you with flashing icons to either spend or buy more gems. Completing levels or watching ads is the only way to get more gems for free. The game does the usual underhanded techniques of offering you discounts in order to get you hooked into buying the premium currency. I got the free gems in the store which forced me to watch one of those stupid misleading trailers and afterwards I only received three gems. So bear in mind if you want to get gems for free you're going to be watching a lot of ads. In this version, heroes can now be resurrected, but that costs gems, and you are absolutely pestered by the game to resurrect them once they die, with notifications in the minimap on both their death location and the guild they were recruited from. I mean, just look at this stupid looking notification. It's just slapped over the corpse of a dead hero. What's worse is that this only applies to the first hero that dies from each guild. So, if your level 1 hero dies first, and then shortly afterwards your level 10 hero dies, then tough luck. Either pay up or accept that you've just lost a very powerful hero. They've managed to make this even more frustrating, as there is a 5 minute timer on your resurrection for each of your heroes. So it would seem that you have to wait the entire 5 minutes before you can even recruit a new hero. On the later levels this will become an absolute nightmare that I imagine is designed to drain your bank account. 
Speaking of levels, there doesn't appear to be a difficulty setting in the free version, meaning that the devs are the ones that set the difficulty. Normally this would be perfectly fine, but given the nature of the monetization here, I would assume that the later levels are made incredibly difficult in order to get you to buy cheats or constantly have to pay to resurrect your good heroes. The cheats as well are pretty forcefully introduced to you in the first level. They do the usual where they give you free gems in order to purchase the instant hire cheat. Piss off with that crap. Players aren't coming to strategy games to instantly have all the challenge removed by buying cheats. Especially when the money spent on those cheats is instantly lost once the game's over. There also appears to be a jigsaw system in the game where you get a piece of a jigsaw every time you complete a level. I like the idea here, but the fact that the game mentions that you can receive the same piece multiple times mixed with the cost of gems per level does make me very concerned as to how long it would actually take for you to complete this jigsaw. If completing the jigsaw is even worth it, or do you just get some art? Unless otherwise stated, I will not be referring to the free version of the game. However, most of my comments relating to gameplay should still apply to the free version. Once you boot up the game, you'll land on a pretty bog standard menu. You can access the achievements you've acquired so far, and you can check your leaderboard. Though I feel like the leaderboard is a little bit pointless, because it only shows local profiles. There isn't really much of a settings menu to speak of, simply an option to disable the audio. This is something the expansion added upon by adding an additional setting to disable the music, separate from muting the entire game. Which thank god they added the option to mute the music alone, since you'll be listening to the same two or three tracks from Kevin Manthe's original soundtrack for Majesty, over and over and over again. Don't get me wrong, I love the Majesty soundtrack, I just think that hearing the same track unloop over and over again is a pain especially when it's one track per map. The expansion did add a few unique tracks and recreations of classics, but I personally felt that these didn't match the quality and the tone of the other tracks playing, making it quite jarring when they started playing. They played a lot. They are seemingly linked to the new snow maps, so most of the snow maps I ended up playing had no music. Confusingly, the original trailer for Majesty Mobile uses music from Majesty 2, music that's not even present in the game. I'm not sure why they did this. My biggest audio gripe in the game was to do with the hero death cries. The death cry of any unit in an RTS is supposed to help the player figure out what's going on on the map without the need of having to see it. Having your heroes all have unique death cries lets you know instantly, oh shit, my wizard just died, or something's going on over there. Majesty Mobile simply just does not do this, instead going for more basic grunts and moans for each death cry. This is especially frustrating since this is something that the original Majesty got so right, having memorable specific lines for each hero class. At last! My service ends! In Majesty Mobile, this got hateful on the last level of the expansion, where you're fighting hostile warriors and healers who all have the exact same death cries as your heroes, so the entire map just became a grunting moaning fest. I ended up having to pay extra close attention to the minimap based notifications to see if any of those noises even belonged to my units. The expansion also added in a new monster, the Medusa, which is seemingly louder than anything else in the audio mix. Its cries are definitely in the right direction since they are all unique, but they made the bizarre decision to make the creature scream every time it takes damage, which really made me dread seeing it on the map, and not for the right reasons. Hearing this noise over and over again just did my head in. There's not much else to say for sounds, there's not much in terms of sound effects in the game. When you're not watching a hero fight a creature, the game is essentially silent. So let's talk story. When you open the campaign for the first time, you'll be greeted by the only thing that constitutes for a story in Majesty. A written blurb before each level with no overarching story. Sometimes a plot will continue between one or two levels, but that's about the height of it. Which is fine, since it's really just there to give you a background for your objective. 
What is disappointing is that they decided to not go with the voiceover, since that can add a lot of character to the story you're playing. The original Majesty had some really great voiceovers by the talented George Ledoux before each level that really helped give an idea of what you were doing. This morning, while cleaning out the royal courier pigeon roost, a servant noticed an unfamiliar bird. Attached to its leg was a message. It reads, I am trapped in the tower of an evil wizard. Please, please, please rescue me. My mother, the Queen of Val Morgan, will richly reward you. Scouts confirmed that the young Prince of Val Morgan recently vanished while on a hunting trip. The reward and goodwill generated by this rescue would do our kingdom well. Because of this, I ended up a lot of the time just not reading more than a sentence or two and the objective, which is a shame. Some of these have the potential to sound great with a proper professional voiceover, even if they couldn't get George Ledoux back. Here I've used Replica AI to try and give an idea of how something like this would have felt. Your Majesty, have you already looked at yourself in the mirror today? No, please don't do that. An evil necromancer has turned all the kingdom's inhabitants into terrible skeletons. There is an advantage though. The side effect of this spell has turned all the terrible skeletons into cute rabbits. But it's cold comfort. After committing his malicious act, the necromancer died in the throes, and his loyal servants quickly took his remains away to secluded heathen temples. The situation seems oppressive, but there's a small chance to overcome it. Our learned wizards think that if we put all the necromancer's parts together, the spell will be cancelled. I think we should start doing this immediately. Something like this would be a really nice addition if the developers were considering a sequel. I played through most of the campaign either on normal or easy difficulty, so keep that in mind as I talk about the missions here. Each level of Majesty plays out somewhat like a puzzle. There is an objective that you must complete, and it's usually summed up as explore to a thing or kill a thing. But the way you go about that is the puzzle. I won't spoil all the missions, but I will give you an idea of how these objectives play out. In the base game, I found the difficulty was pretty perfect right up until level 9, when the game weirdly gave me an achievement for completing the campaign and then seemingly threw me in the deep end. You start off with significantly less money than the earlier levels, so much so that building your basic buildings such as a warrior's guild and a few heroes just left me broke, so you have to be very strategic about what you build. Then in level 10 the difficulty spiked again, it is now so painfully slow that I went away and watched a 30 minute YouTube video, came back and I had only made 6000 gold. For comparison, you can make around 6000 gold on a normal level within a few minutes. What makes matters more nefarious is that when you fail a level, the temptress that is the in-game purchase to unlock all levels starts flashing, beckoning you forth to fork out more money. But I resisted its evil call throughout both my campaigns, mostly because I was playing on an easier difficulty. Across both campaigns, there are a handful of really interesting objectives. My personal favourites consisted of racing a kingdom of dwarves to see who could destroy the monster layers first, and a level where you had to team up with some dragons in order to destroy the stone golem, but you could also team up with stone golems to destroy the dragons. There is of course the iconic majesty level in which you take down a multi-headed dragon, which was a very difficult but highly enjoyable level. I just wish there was more missions facing off against hostile human kingdom. There were a handful, but you really didn't do much outside of destroying a couple of buildings, rather than taking on a fully fledged kingdom. I imagine this is down to the age of the game and the hardware that was available at the time. Visually speaking, the game has been given an entire art overhaul when compared to Majesty on the PC. Each asset has been recreated to a more standard mobile art style. I can only guess this change was made to make things more legible on a smaller screen. I don't really mind the art style change, but I do feel that some of the character of the original game was lost in translation. Examples that were hurt the most is that the healers and the necromancers have been changed from their distinct female character models used before into now just being a simple recolor of the wizard. I also found that the text font and colour choice to be very difficult at a distance that I would normally hold my phone. The gold on blue text in the menus of the base game just wasn't very readable for me. Thankfully this has improved somewhat in the expansion. But something that wasn't approved is the text notifications popping up in the bottom left. These were impossible for me to read. This wouldn't be so much of an issue but coupled with the audio not being distinct, it boils down to me seeing notifications and hearing sounds and just still being clueless as to what's happening on the map. I mentioned at the start that this game is somewhat of a port. 
By this I meant that certain features, buildings, monster types and heroes were stripped from the game, or they were consolidated into other heroes. For example, peasants have been removed from the game, so you will no longer see big, bustling cities. Instead, your buildings will all magically build themselves. Which I feel takes away from the character of the wizard's tower, since that uniquely used to just build itself. The same goes for the gnomes. The gnome hero has been replaced with a map-wide passive effect. And there is significantly less creature variety, with iconic creatures like the Ratman or the Giants just missing from the game. There are now only three temples, down from the seven on PC, so your spell and hero variety has also been reduced. Majesty Mobile should be considered a lesser version of the PC classic, but it does retain the core gameplay. So let's finally get into the gameplay. After I completed the base game's campaign, I hooked up a mouse to my phone. This became my preferred way to play the game, since it gave me so much more precision when placing buildings and flags over using my big chunky fingers, though my chunky fingers work too. Even with the mouse it can still sometimes be pretty frustrating to select buildings or heroes, especially when things start to clump together. This can sometimes lead to double clicking on your own heroes or buildings and setting a bounty on them. Thankfully you can just cancel the bounty. The inability to directly control your heroes can lead to some frustrating moments, where you just watch as they accept their fate and fight unwinnable battles, dying and wasting gold you spent recruiting them. And you'll be doing that a lot, as the AI heroes apparently have very little regard for their own safety, with warriors often wandering up to dragons and just whacking them with wooden sticks. I did however witness a fun interaction during my playthrough of the final level of the expansions campaign. One of my rangers walked up to the hostile healer camp and started attacking it. Then I got to witness a little march of healers all across the map as they wandered out from corners of the map yet unseen, coming to the aid of their currently in combat brethren, temporarily ruining the entire balance of the game. You're able to select your heroes to see more information on them like their current stats and equipment. I really only checked the hero's health or to see if they still had health potion when I was deciding whether or not I should heal them, but it's pretty neat to see that they all have individual stats. I feel like this could be used to min-max your heroes in order to get the best possible results on the harder difficulties. Setting goals for your heroes to complete is the most direct control you have over any of your inhabitants. Double clicking on an empty space in the world will set an exploration flag, while double clicking on an enemy will set a bounty. Sometimes the fog itself can be a source of frustration. If your heroes have only explored enough for you to peek at a monster's lair, meaning that you'll either have to click around the base of the building in the hopes that you'll select it, or waste gold to send a hero out just to explore a little bit more. Outside of setting your flags, the main thing you do in Majesty is construct and plan out your city. Your buildings are pretty key to your success, so some form of planning is necessary here. You start off every mission with access to some basic buildings, like a marketplace to earn money, a warrior and rangers guild to recruit your first heroes, and guard towers to keep the baddies at bay. The rangers guild simply lets you recruit the ranger, who is a cheap ranged hero that just loves exploring the unknown, and dying to everything they come across, so thank god they are cheap. The Warriors Guild on the other hand starts off by letting you recruit the basic balanced hero, the Warrior, who will waddle about with a sword and shield and is a pretty useful blunt object to just throw at your foes. The Warriors Guild also has the unique bonus of calling upon its warriors to defend anything that is adjacent to it. This is an ability you should keep in mind when placing down your first Warriors Guild. The marketplace at later upgrades makes you a boatload of money, but this comes with the caveat that it also spawns pretty tanky trolls for you to deal with. I recommend you place down your marketplace roughly around in the front of your castle. This will give your tax collectors quick and easy access to it. Then place a guard tower at the entrance. The guard tower will distract and annoy the trolls until your heroes arrive, and your tax collector can deliver your precious gold into the guard tower too. After you've placed down the marketplace on the guard tower, place your warrior's guild right next to the marketplace, ideally adjacent to the castle as well, so that its heroes will be called upon to defend both. I really love this early stage of the game, building up my city and watching my warriors wander about killing monsters, then using the rangers to gather the layout of the map in order to figure out how strong the foes are, is just an enjoyable period of the game. It's peaceful and nothing's gone to shit yet. I generally stay in this state for a wee while just letting the tax collectors do their thing and having the rangers explore a little on their own. Once the money starts pouring in and you have a few heroes, you'll be able to upgrade your castle in order to unlock new buildings and upgrades. The main things you'll unlock as you upgrade are your wizard's tower, the different temples, and your elven bungalow or the dwarven tower. You will have to choose between the money hungry elves, the building repairing gnomes, and the sturdy dwarves, with their unique ballista towers. I usually went with the elves since they're a pretty good ranged hero and they boost your economy, though you don't get many of them, so if you want the usual four heroes, you're going to have to build two guilds. 
the wizard's tower and the mutually exclusive temples let you recruit new heroes and give you access to new powerful spells that you use gold to cast across your kingdom. The temples also unlock unique temple specific heroes at your warrior's guild, like a tanky paladin and a high damage warrior of discord. Your glass cannon wizards are going to need a library as well to gain their most powerful spells, like teleporting their ass out of danger. Until you have one they're pretty squishy, with some spawning as low as 4 HP. The library lets you research new spells for your wizards to use, but it also grants you a discount on upgrades in other buildings. By the time I built the library usually, it was so late in the game that this never really came into account for me, but it's something worth knowing. Your temples are mutually exclusive to each other, so you've got to choose which one you want to build. Here, you've got three choices. The Temple to Crypta, which lets you recruit four necromancers who each create a single level scaled skeleton, grants you access to undead related spells, and allows Warriors of Discord to be recruited from your Warriors Guild. Then you've got the Temple to Agrilla, which lets you recruit four healers, grants you your healing spells, and lets you recruit your paladins from your Warriors Guild. You can also choose to build the Temple to Crawl, but this just lets you recruit four high damage, no armor barbarians. I didn't find these heroes particularly useful and the lack of spells from this temple makes it feel pretty useless to me. My recommendation of the three is to go with the temple of Agrella, since I had a few scenarios of a paladin single handedly fending off an entire monster's lair. That's not even taken into account that paladins are usually backed up by their healers. Then you've also got your support spells that can just provide support to everybody else. So let's talk about these spells. Depending on what building you've got, you will be granted a variety of different powerful spells. Using these spells costs a different amount of gold depending on their strength, with the highest being around 2000 gold. Your wizard's tower will give you access to the most basic spells, things like revealing the fog of war, making your selected hero invisible, or summoning a giant lightning storm to deal damage to a bunch of units in an area. Thankfully this does not apply friendly fire, or at least I never noticed it applying friendly fire. You can also spend 500 gold to overcharge your basic spells, making things like your lightning storm an expensive boss killer. Your temples grant temple specific spells, so the temple of Agrilla's support style spells are things like heal, buff and resurrection, while your temple of crypto will grant you slightly more aggressive spells like a debuff to enemy stats, an ability to summon a level scaled skeleton out of a selected unit, and a weak reanimate spell that brings back your unit but with only a wee bit of its health. You've got to be tactical when using the reanimate spell. Too many times did I use it only for a hero to instantly die again, wasting my gold. When you begin a mission in Majesty, a solid strategy I found that worked across both games was to rush out two marketplaces, a blacksmith, and eventually build an elven bungalow. Once that's all up and running, your income becomes pretty crazy, and you can manage to get over 10,000 gold within a few minutes. This is when I would switch from managing the city itself to focusing on maxing out my hero's stats, using my excess gold to heal, buff or resurrect them whenever they needed it. This way, even without my supervision, the heroes would all be able to handle themselves in most situations, so I could just toss them at whatever I wanted and hopefully get the objective complete. Certain environmental objects like evergreen trees or tombstones will get in your road when you're trying to place buildings, even if the actual building structure is not over those trees. As your city expands, you will notice sewers and houses beginning to appear, sometimes in locations seemingly designed to do your head in. Hero houses can be demolished and they will instantly rebuild themselves somewhere else. I recommend doing this after you've collected the tax. Sewers however will start spawning giant rats and cannot be destroyed. I generally build a guard tower near these and that tended to keep them at bay. But giant rats will be the least of your concerns in your adventures across the different levels in Majesty. You'll come across a variety of different hostiles, like skeletons, zombies, vampires, goblins, dragons and even a few hostile human forces. The expansion even added two additional creatures in the form of a medusa and the giant stone golem. Though as mentioned earlier I'm not a huge fan of the medusa. She deals damage in a circle around her but it's not enough to make her threatening. Stacking onto that she has a low amount of health and the previously mentioned audio oddities leads to a very unfun enemy that I just want to avoid. These monsters all spawn from monster layers that are scattered throughout the map. Destroying a monster layer yields a bunch of gold to your heroes, but also spews out a few monsters as a last ditch attempt to kill off any heroes who may be weakened, so you best have your heal spell ready. If enough of your heroes wander off to their doom, a graveyard will spawn in your city, which will start spewing out skelly boys into your city, and if your heroes continue being idiots, scrapping with beasts far stronger than them, then your graveyard will upgrade itself into a bigger pain in the ass that also spawns zombies. 
I always just built a guard post around the graveyard in the hopes that it just wouldn't give me too much bother. Generally speaking, the guard tower held its own. While you do face off against a couple of ragtag groups of human enemies, including one dubious mission where you hunt down illegal immigrants from a neighbouring kingdom who only have weak warriors and live in peasant huts, uh, that mission kind of just comes out of nowhere and leaves as abruptly as it came. I really wish they had a mission, or at least the option in Skirmish, to face off against an AI kingdom. Perhaps this is simply a limitation of the age of the game, given the hardware of mobiles back in 2011. Throughout my playthrough of both games, I encountered very few bugs, if any. The only oddness I really encountered was that sometimes heroes would just kinda keel over and die on their own. I was unable to discover what exactly was causing this. At first, I thought it was mission related, since it first happened in the base game on a level that warned the land itself would damage my heroes, or maybe something was attacking them from beyond the fog of war. It happened across a good few levels though, to heroes who were just out about in visible space with no nearby enemies. Perhaps it's their large consumption of health potions just led to heart attacks. Unless someone has an explanation, I'm gonna mark this down as a weird funky bug. Another oddity that I discovered is that I was able to place an attack flag on a destroyed building, but I couldn't cancel that flag, so any money that I had added to the bounty, without realising it was a mistake, could never be captured, so it was essentially burnt. This was very infrequent though. I also had a somewhat consistent issue, where after completing the level, the campaign map would not fade back in, remaining darker until I selected something. Something I wish they had added to the game was the ability to queue up recruiting heroes. There was a lot of time spent babysitting buildings to see if the hero had been recruited so that I could quickly get on to recruiting the next one. At least in the expansion they added a tiny progress bar above each building to show how it's doing. That way I don't have to click through each building double checking, oh is this one done or is that one done. In the base game you only have one save slot to use across the entire campaign, which made me consider every time I went to save, since save scumming wasn't an option if I made a mistake. The save slots were expanded in the expansion to 3. While save scumming was now an option, I never really felt the need. Perhaps on the harder difficulties, save scumming would actually be a godsend. But on normal or lower, it's just a nice quality of life improvement. One major disappointment for me though is that backing up your saves is currently not possible without having a rooted or jailbroken device. Meaning if you uninstall the game or you move to a different device, you will lose all your progress and all your achievements. And finally, what are my thoughts on Majesty Mobile as a whole? Overall I think that Herocraft's port of Majesty is a pretty good game, and it's well worth the money. I played both the base game and the expansion and I ended up racking around 32 hours of playtime, and when I finished the campaign I still wanted to go back and play skirmish mode. To me, that's the sign of a good game. Due to its more passive gameplay style, Majesty is a game that you can put on your phone while you're doing some other monotonous task and easily play through the whole campaign in the background. Just be aware that you'll be hearing similar sounding death cries a lot, and without any babysitting your heroes will constantly die. It is definitely a step down from the PC version, since it's lacking a good number of features and the skirmish mode could use a few additional features like randomised objectives or even an enemy AI kingdom to make it more replayable. But considering this game came out near 12 years ago, I would say it's well worth the price of admission. I would suggest trying out the first level or two of the free version if you're really on the fence about this kind of game. But please, do not touch those in-app purchases, that will just continue to incentivize bad practices. Otherwise you can go straight for the northern expansion, it has the most features of the two game and isn't an absolute pest like the free version while having a lengthy campaign. If you have a PC and were interested in this style of game but wanted more, I would highly recommend checking out the full release of Majesty Gold HD. It's a pretty solid game and I have spent countless hours playing it. Alrighty, that's all I have for you today, so if you stuck around this long, thank you very much for listening. Check out the description below for all the usual links. Once I've escaped my prison and extracted my revenge, I will see you all in the next video.